Good evening to all who are joining this midweek Lenten service. It is a joy and it is a delight that we can share this time together. I am Pastor H Hector Garfias Toledo, and on behalf of the people of Trinity Lutheran Church, God's people serving through this congregation, we want to extend the Lord's welcome to all of you. Tonight and the following Wednesdays, we'll be gathering to sing and to reflect on the healing power and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ through his life, death, and resurrection. You will hear reflections from several members of the congregation who will be uh, helping us to see how faith intersects with our experience and their expertise in connection with health and healing for individuals and for our communities. Also, we will be uh, the worship service. We'll have a Bible study after, after, afterwards, 
And in that we will Bible study, we'll be able to go deeper in the message for that evening. I encourage you to participate in the way that brings you meaning in your spiritual life. You can sing along. You can follow the melody. You can read the words on the screen. Or you can stand or sit comfortably. The most important thing is that we remember that we are united in one spirit in this celebration. I invite you to contact the, 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 the church office if you have any questions, if you need assistance to, to connect or to find the links for the Bible study, or if you need any materials that will help you, or if you need a Lenten bag, one of those kits that are available with devotions and other um, items that will help you to walk this Lenten journey together. And now, as we are coming... Um, uh, to this uh, Wednesday, first Wednesday in Lent. I want to thank God for each one of you. And I also encourage you to thank God in your prayers for all the people, for all the members, for all the leaders who have put their gifts um, to the disposition of God's work in this place to make this worship service possible. Thanks be to God for all of you. And I invite you to prepare now your hearts and your minds as we prepare for this worship and reflection. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, Set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, Every dancing star of night, Make us shine with gentle justice, Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, Gentle Christ who lights our way, Loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you. Creator of the universe, from old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. 
my prayer rise up like incense before you the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you oh god i call to you oh come god, to me I call now. to you Oh, hear to my you voice now. when I oh, cry hear to my you. voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise, let my prayer like rise incense up, like before incense you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering to as an you. Offering to you. Keep watch within me. Keep, Keep in my heart, in may God. the light Keep of in your my heart be burning bright. Be burning bright. Let my eyes, let my prayer light like incense be before The lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Praise to the God of all, Creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of, and the Spirit of Let my prayer rise, let my prayer like incense be you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering. As we offer him to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround us and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Gospel the second Wednesday of Lent is Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. Jesus heals a centurion's servant. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed within that hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I am Michelle Rayton, and Pastor Hector invited me to give a reflection on the theme for the second Wednesday in Lent, safekeeping, community, and economic health. But before I do so, I would like to introduce myself. Though I have been a member of Trinity for over 20 years, there are still many of you that I do not know. During my time at Trinity, I have served in many different areas. I have served on the Social Concerns Committee, Stephen Ministry, Endowment Board, Children's Ministry, and I am currently an at-large member of the Church Council. For over nine years, I've had the privilege of serving as a social worker 
for the Edmonds Senior Center, now the Edmonds Waterfront Center. I am also serving as a member of the Human Services Commission for the City of Linwood. Tonight, I would like to discuss what does it mean to be one? God gathers us as a beachcomber gathers and marvels at every precious surviving piece of glass she finds. We are never alone. We are never lost to the one who seeks humanity's wholeness. We affirm our commitment to be the body of Christ that knows we cannot personally be healed until we see the interconnected community as part of the process of healing. Jesus has the power to re-envision the family of God in which false boundaries are overcome. In a year of devastating loss of livelihood, we consider the economic health that reimagines the status quo. In the gospel, we read of how Jesus physically healed the centurion servant. Throughout the gospels, we read of how Jesus healed the physical ailments of many. Yet we know that there are many different types of health and we are called to heal those ailments as well. My favorite verse in the Bible is Micah chapter eight, sorry, Micah chapter six, verse eight. He has told you mortal one, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. To me as a Christian, this is what we are called to do. This is what guides me. Because we have different gifts, the way we are called may look different, but we are all called to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. This last year has been devastating in both physical and economic health. I read somewhere that we are all in the same storm in the ocean, but some of us are weathering the storm in yachts, others in one of your male boats, and some are hanging on to a life raft, trying not to go under into the stormy waters. To me, this perfectly summed up this last year. According to an analysis by Oxford Economics, during the worst year for economic recovery since 1946, Americans saved money at, a, at an historically high rate. But those savings largely stayed in the pockets of higher earners while everyone else held close to nothing by the end of 2020. U.S. households accumulated around 1.6 trillion in excess savings over the last 10 months. But the top 20% of earners, and to a lesser extent, the second 20%, account for all of the current accumulated cash. Meanwhile, the bottom 60% have spent most, if not all, of their savings. All of the savings buffer is essentially now in the hands of the top 40%, whereas the bottom 60% have essentially spent most of their fiscal reserves. The COVID-19 pandemic did not cause this disparity. It highlighted it and exasperated it. Those that have had much have more. And, that, and for those that were barely hanging on, they fell off. We see it all around us, job loss, hunger, food insecurity, homelessness. All of these have increased over this last year. As a Christian called to do justice, love kindness and walk humbly with our God, this can all feel very overwhelming. How can I as just one person help? Years of economic policy, and systemic racism exploded this last year, spilling into our streets. How do we address decades and centuries of injustice? We must remember that we are not alone. We are all one body in Christ. We are all interconnected. And as one body, we can begin to heal the community and tear down false societal boundaries. Throughout history, we have seen these people acting as one body and they tore down these boundaries. The abolitionist during slavery, the suffrage movement, the civil rights movement, and those working for safer, more
more equitable labor laws. Though not fully eliminating these boundaries, they did begin to tear them down and to seek humanity's wholeness. This last year has been devastating. Yet I have seen people working to tear down boundaries and seek our wholeness as one humanity. I have witnessed those that have much help those that have little. When the pandemic hit, I was approached by a friend who was concerned about the elderly as she saw how frightened they were when they were going grocery shopping. She wanted to know how to help because one person asked, how can I help? The Edmonds Waterfront Center set up a volunteer system that provided meals to over 40 people seven days a week for 11 months. We served over 9,000 meals. Schubert Ho, a local restaurateur, donated over 500 meals. Over 60 volunteers gave up time during their busy week to drive around, deliver lunches, or go grocery shopping. Over $28,000 was donated from the community to purchase meals and groceries. In the gospel, the centurion told Jesus, just speak and my servant will be healed. In March, one person spoke and a community stepped up to heal the brokenness. We are not one, we are a whole. I witnessed people stepping up through this last year, neighbors helping neighbors, strangers gathering to protest for racial injustice, a business owner paying his staff to volunteer. Together, as one, we can heal a community. As we work to heal our local communities, we also are called to look beyond our boundaries and towards the community at large, the greater United States, and the world, because as Christians, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, not bound by geographic boundaries. We must fight for equitable policies that help everyone not only survive the storm, but thrive in the storm. Today, as we begin to see vaccines become available, and hopefully the end of this pandemic, we are seeing wealthier countries amass these vaccines, leaving out the most vulnerable. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez explained, quote, the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines is generating hope. At this critical moment, vaccine equity is the biggest moral test before the global community, end quote. The progress on vaccines has been wildly uneven and inequitable. With just 10 countries having administered 75% of all vaccines, more than 130 countries have not received a single dose. Gutierrez warned that, quote, if the virus is allowed to spread like wildfire in the global south, it will mutate again and again. This can prolong the pandemic significantly, enabling the virus to come back to plague the global north, unquote. We are all interconnected, not bound by boundaries. In Corinthians, Jesus called us to treat others as we would like to be treated. We are called to look beyond ourselves to our greater community. The centurion stated that he was also one with authority and he understood that because of his authority, he had power. His one voice could command change. To be honest, as a white middle-class person, I have that power. We all have that power. Only when we see others as ourselves can we use that power to heal the community. When one falls, we all fall. We must understand that by working towards equity, we are fulfilling what God has called us to do, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. We may be one individual, but we are all many in the body of Christ. Thank you very much.
us whole. May we rest in your compassion, calm the lost weary soul in the warmth of your love. May your peace fill our hearts. May we know the love of Jesus by your grace. You console, make us holy. For us who are 
are gathered to worship and praise you, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern that justice might guide them, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor that justice might guide them, God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant whether that nourishes service to others, God of mercy, hold us in Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness in life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace.